I've been saying for a long time that we're headed for what I call the Greater Depression. That's a period of time when most people's Hello everyone, best-selling author and speculator WJKSE joined us this week to discuss the looming economic disaster caused by government missteps and mistakes. We discuss inflation, CBDCs, real estate bubbles, gold, and Bitcoin. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. No, f f fair enough, of course. And I think the whole momentum accelerated uh, over the last three, maybe five years uh, in, in particular as well, because money printing has I don't know, completely exploded, of course, to unreasonable levels here as well. Um, is, th is that why you're saying the chickens are coming home to roost now? Like, and what could trigger that as well? Like, what could set off the barbecue here, <laughs> Doug, for lack of a better term? <laughs> right. It's funny. I've, I've been to Haiti many times over the years, and it's... Uh, finally making front page news. Um, okay, look, one manifestation of all of this is the amount of debt in the world that governments own, that, uh, that corporations, individuals owe. Uh, the whole world uh, revolves around debt. In fact, even the uh, dollar, whether we're talking, or, or euro or whatever currency we're talking about, they're all debt-based currencies. And the problem with debt is, uh, in itself, uh, debt is fine if, if it comes from real savings and it's being used for productive purposes to, uh, to make more wealth. But most debt today is actually consumer debt. All government debt is consumer debt. And most, of, um, most private debt is consumer debt. And what does that mean? When you borrow money, you're taking capital that somebody else has saved over the past and using it, or you're mortgaging your future where you're going to pay it back uh, sometime down the road. And uh, the problem when there's a lot of debt is that it can become a daisy chain. When one person defaults on his debt, the next person can't pay off. The next person can't pay off. And there are uh, hundreds of trillions of dollars worth of debt in the world today. So it's an unstable situation. So uh, I don't know what the, uh, what the uh, catalyst, the exact catalyst that's going to set off the depression is going to be. We've had a gradual depression since uh, 1971 when when even the government statistics show that the average guy's standard of living after taxes, after inflation, uh, has been has been dropping. Uh, will we have another 1929-style event? It's entirely possible. Well, look, I've been saying for a long time that we're headed for what I call the Greater Depression. That's a period of time when most people's standard of living will drop significantly. And right now we're on the razor's edge of something very, very bad happening to the uh, economy. I don't like to say things like that because it doesn't make you popular. It scares people. What's the point of that? But uh, the fact is that uh, governments, and governments are primarily in back of all the problems we have, uh, have done many, many stupid things over many, many years. And the chickens are coming home to roost. And that's why... Essentially, I've always been a fan of gold. I've been a gold buyer ever since 1971. And it's been reasonably good to me because I've used it as a savings vehicle more than a speculative vehicle. Although from time to time, it's been a great speculative vehicle. But the thing with gold is that it's the only financial asset. It's not simultaneously somebody else's liability. Well, Bit Bitcoin is moving into that space now, too. And I've, I've been a supporter of Bitcoin since 2017, a little bit of a late adopter. But uh, that's, kind of the, that's kind of the overview of the bottom line. 
No, fantastic. Awesome. Really appreciate you setting the scene. And uh, I think we need to get a bit more granular, really work out, like, where did the government go wrong? Um, and of course, like, what, what does the Greater Depression scenario look like as well? So let, let's start maybe on the on the government side and uh, the political side here as well, maybe monetary and f uh, fiscal side as well. Um, what, what were the biggest missteps here, Doug? Well, look, 100 years ago, uh, all the governments of the world or any of the governments in the world only took five or 10% at most of their economies. Uh, now, most governments are up to the 40, 50, or 60% level. And the state as an institution has become an overweening influence in the economy and in most people's private lives. And I think that that's a very bad and destructive thing. Uh, there's two ways that you can relate with your fellow man coercively or voluntarily. And the problem with the state is it institutionalizes coercion. Uh, I believe in free minds and free markets. So uh, one of the problems with all the distortions, well, distortions are in the way the economy works is uh, one of the problems with having a huge amount of state intervention. Uh, this takes place through their taxes where they confiscate the things you produce directly, and uh, more subtly through um, inflation, where they can print up, as they're doing, trillions of new currency units and spend them where they want, as opposed to where you may want. And by the time the dollars filter down to you, they're worth a lot less. And what do they buy with all this taxation and inflation? Lots of regulations. And regulations tell you what you must do or must not do. And uh, they, they reduce the amount of real production in the world. So uh, let's put it this way. Uh, your enemy is the state, no matter what country you live in. I'm curious, like one, one thing he wants to do is get Argentina back on the U.S. dollar, of course. And I do want to talk with you about the U.S. dollar and the role of the U.S. dollar in the, in the you know, grand scheme of things like global uh, world economy here and uh, the role as the world reserve currency. Like, Doug, how, how strong is that U.S. dollar then right now? Well, it's the uh, healthiest horse on the way to the slaughterhouse, quite frankly. Uh, people that are keeping most of their wealth in dollars are, are making a big mistake. Um, look, it, it, it's a fiat currency where most of the most of what the U.S. government spends now, or about half of it anyway, uh, doesn't come from taxing uh, their population, their subjects. It comes from printing up new dollars, and this is going to result in much higher levels of inflation in the future. So, for that reason, I wouldn't touch bonds such touch bonds either uh, with a barge pole. Uh, I'll use them as a speculative vehicle from time to time. So uh, I'm very interested, always have been, but uh, especially now in commodities and not just gold, uh, not just silver, but uh, you can make a very good bull case for uranium, for copper, for nickel, for many commodities uh, at this point. It's a better place to, uh, to speculate and everything is a speculation today investment, uh, which is putting a unit of capital someplace in order to create more capital. It's like planting a seed of corn in order to get a, a bushel of corn. That's what investing is all about. Uh, but investing is harder and harder today because the economy is more and more state controlled. Uh, it makes it unpredictable, it makes it unstable. So whether you like the idea or not, you're almost being forced to be a speculator by the government's inflation, primarily, but also by its taxation and its regulation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Is that why we're seeing a move away from fiat currencies in general? Like the you know, talk of a gold-backed currency potentially out of the BRICS, for example, uh, is still making rounds. It's a little hotter, a little colder rumor here from time to time, depending on uh, you know when when a meeting is coming up here of the BRICS. Um, I'm, I'm curious, like, is, is that something you see happening again? Like a gold-backed currency, for example? Well, let me go back to what, what you said earlier. Uh, Millet does not want to see <clears throat> the economy dollarized. What he really wants to see is 
people use whatever they wish, whatever works for a medium of exchange. And the dollar uh, is the best medium of exchange right now in the world. Uh, the Argentine peso is not, never has been. Um, but all of these currencies in the world, including the BRICS currencies, have the same problem. They're all fiat currencies. And one of the nice things about the, uh, the Bitcoin revolution that we're experiencing is that uh, in the past, uh, gold bugs like myself used to refer to the dollar as a fiat currency, but that was meaningless to most people because the dollar is supposed to be sound as a dollar. Dollar is as good as gold. So we call the dollar a fiat currency. It didn't mean much. But as Bitcoin developed, now everybody calls it a fiat currency, and they understand that. So Bitcoin is kind of a, a very friendly associate uh, of, of gold from, from that point of view. But uh, you're not going to see China and Russia come up with a common gold-backed currency. Uh, why? Because they don't trust each other. In fact, why, why is a currency needed? A currency is a certificate issued by a government. In the past, uh, before 1933, <clears throat> you used gold as a currency. You didn't have to have a middleman. You didn't have to have a central bank, a government, uh, stand in between you and the actual asset. Uh, so, yeah, I think the world will go back to gold itself, and hopefully we won't have currencies. Because you've got to remember, the dollar, <clears throat> the pound, the franc, the mark, these were just names for specific amounts of gold. And that distinction has been totally lost. People have forgotten that's what it was. And they think that the, the phony paper uh, spewed out by central banks is money. It's not. They're going to be sadly disappointed. But no, the, the uh, Russians and the Chinese are not going to have a common currency because they don't trust each other and with good reason. No, absolutely. And throw India there as well. Like there's three people at the table that don't really like talking to each other, although they're sort of uh, aligned because they had to get together to, to fight to fight the West. Right. That's right. So, that's right. That's right. And, so. and they certainly <clears throat> don't want to use the IOU of a bankrupt government to trade between themselves, which they do now because it's convenient, but they don't want to because these transfers that occur internationally all clear through New York. And as the Russians recently found, that's really dangerous because if the U.S. government, which is run by Jacobins today, uh, decides that they don't like you, they'll steal your assets. And they'll use them as collateral for other investments as well, apparently. Yes. So <laughs> they'll issue bonds backed by uh, stolen assets. So really, really interesting topic there. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but uh, I want to throw in one more uh, topic here into the discussion is sort of accelerating the decay of fiat currencies. Is, is uh, C our CBDCs a sort of an uh, accelerator? Are they like a, a catalyst for uh, maybe, you know, gold in particular? Yeah, CBDC, central bank digital currencies. Uh, they're obviously... Uh, being imposed on the world uh, and they're from the point of view of the average guy uh, they're going to be a catastrophe they're monstrous uh, it means that all of your liquid wealth your dollars are digital which means that they're completely controlled by the state uh, and well in canada for instance just recently uh, the canadian truckers found that uh, if you have digital assets, you may not have digital assets. So the, <laughs> a lot of Canadian truckers were being treated within Canada the way Russia is being treated internationally. Now, I'm completely opposed to uh, central bank digital currencies. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Dub Casey. If you enjoy this highlight video, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.